Britain is famed for its pub culture, and millions of us enjoy a pint each week. In fact, it's estimated we drink 15,000 of them a minute. In the Middle Ages, beer was considered a nutritious supplement. Diluted small beer was often served in schools and workhouses. Little wonder then, it became the national tipple. And long before that continental fizz known as lager hit the scene, ale, brewed with malted barley and hops, was our beer of choice. Shepherd Neem, based in Kent, claimed to be Britain's oldest brewer. There's been a brewery on this site for a, a remarkably long time. So I'm the fifth generation uh, of the Neem family to have, to have the privilege of running this wonderful uh, brewery. And Chief Executive Jonathan Neem knows just how to quench our thirst. Our best known beer is Spitfire. We launched it in 1990. We launched it originally just as a one-off brew to raise money for the 50th anniversary uh, of the Battle of Britain in 1990. It's a great, classic, well-balanced British ale. They produce 12 million pints of Spitfire ale every year. Combining spring water with malted barley, yeast and hops in a process little changed since the Middle Ages. The ingredients are locally sourced, including from beneath the brewery itself. This is the very start of the brewing process where we're down right at the bottom of the uh, brewery next to our borehole. Um, so we've been extracting water from the borehole for a couple of hundred years and uh, this goes down um, nearly 100 feet into the aquifer uh, and where we extract all our brewing water. The brewery sits above a thick layer of Kentish chalk that filters the 44 million gallons of water the brewery uses each year. Oh, we've got plenty of water down there. I don't think it's run out for uh, 250 years or so, so I'm uh, pre pretty confident we've got enough for the next few years. The next biggest ingredient is British barley. And by the time it arrives at the brewery, it's been steeped in water to kickstart germination. Now known as malt, this is where the sugar that'll eventually become alcohol comes from. Malt arrives in large trucks or trailers uh, and it's offloaded into these silos where we store it until we're ready to batch it out into our brews. They use 5,000 tonnes of malt a year and it all needs to pass through the malt mill. It's quite noisy in this part. So the next part of the process is taking the malt from the silos and actually crushing it uh, in the mill. So we can see over here we've got uh, quite an old shaker box up there, which actually sieve out any fine or large material from the malt. And then it falls into our uh, four roller mill which you can see below. So uh, this mill is 50, 60 years old, so it's done a lot of work in its time. Once the malt's been crushed, it's added to the water, known as the brewer's liquor, in steel mash tuns. I guess this is the start of the real brewing process where uh, we've got the vessels, the mash tuns behind me, which is the, the place where we're adding the, the crushed grain or the grist uh, to the brewing liquor. Uh, and that allows the enzymes to really convert all the starch into sugars. The mash tuns are like giant mixing bowls used to combine the malted barley with the filtered water. Each one holds over 30,000 pints, which sounds like a lot until you consider it's estimated that we Brits drink around 8 billion pints every year. The brew stays in there for around an hour and a half to complete all its processes and start that conversion of the starch into sugars. It's this sugar that will eventually form alcohol. We mash in at round about 65 to 66 degrees, which is round optimum temperature for all those enzymes to start their activity. After a nice long soak, the sugar-infused water, called a wort, is drained off. After the mash tuns uh, and moves onto the copper, where basically we're going to boil up um, the brew and add the hops at this point. Boiling sterilizes the wort and stops the liquid becoming too sweet. Hops are then added, which give the beer much of its flavor. The hops that impart that bitter taste and also some flavor and aromas 
and it really complements the sweetness that you get from the malt. Um, so it kind of balances and ends up with a really good balanced beer. Hops are delicate cone-shaped flowers that, luckily for Mike, are grown just down the road. Well, obviously we're in Kent, the Garden of England, but also the main hop growing region of England. Uh, and so it won't be a surprise that we use a lot of local hops. Kent has a long tradition of hop growing. The mild climate and fertile soil make it an ideal location. Around a thousand acres are being cultivated today, but in its heyday, it would have been 50 times that. During the September harvests, tens of thousands of Londoners would cram onto trains and coaches to pick hops for weeks at a time. It was a welcome break from city life. Families often returned to the same farm every year for decades. And although today the harvest has been modernised, it still depends on teams of workers to pick the flavourful flowers and process them, ready for brewing. Back at the brewery, Mike's ready to add the dried hops to his brew. Every recipe has its, uh, its own unique ingredients and so uh, every beer will have a different amount of hop charge. After boiling in the copper for 90 minutes, the word is filtered before yeast and oxygen are added. And it's pumped into these fermentation vessels. So we come to the next stage of the process, which is re really fermentation. So this is really where the yeast does its magic. So the yeast, first of all, starts growing using the nutrients in the wort and some oxygen. But then it, it starts metabolising all those sugars and producing uh, alcohol. Uh, it takes between 10 and 15 days uh, to ferment, fully ferment uh, the beer. As it ferments, it's Sarah's job to sample the beer, which, as it turns out, isn't as much fun as you'd imagine. So Sarah will take the sample into the lab uh, and then she'll run it through some of her machines in the laboratory and we'll check things like the colour and the bitterness. We'll check the present gravity. So they're the key things that we check to make sure that beer is absolutely spot on and perfect. Once we've got uh, the perfect beer, uh, we're then getting it ready to go to the next stage, which is either uh, filtering it ready for bottling or, uh, or into the, the cask, cask process. If it's destined for a supermarket shelf, the beer is filtered to remove any leftover yeast before being sent to the brewery's own in-house bottling plant. First of all, we get the clean glass coming in, uh, and the glass is actually rinsed and sterilised before it enters the filling machine. Now, this machine goes at around about 30,000 bottles an hour, so it's quite a fast process. And then each bottle is, uh, comes off the filling machine and the cap is applied. And at that stage, the beer is ready for labelling. So we're here at our labelling machine, so one of our newest bits of kit, where they get applied with a front, a back and a neck label. Just so as a double check, we've got a camera system on the labeller, which takes a photograph of every label to make sure that those neck, body, front body and back body labels are in the right position. And this machine goes at around about 30,000 bottles an hour. Um, so it's uh, you know, quite rapid and quite critical that you have it all set up. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bit of a bluey mess on here. The bottle's coming off the labeler. It will travel on the conveyor round to the packing machine, where we'll either pack them into what we call a tray and shrink, so a cardboard tray with a shrink wrapping, or we could put them into a box formation probably do around 50 boxes a minute and load it straight onto a trailer. Uh, so that goes straight off to our off-site warehousing. And across the way, beer destined for pubs is getting pumped into stainless steel casks. This way we put the beer into a cask which ends up being pulled via a hand pump at the, uh, at the pubs. The cask beer, I guess, is the more traditional beer, so as I say, it's unfiltered, it finds itself in the cask and kind of conditions itself in the cask. Um, and that happens out in the actual pub down in the cellar. Uh, so you actually end up with a bright product. All that's left to do 
is the taste test. A nice creamy head. I'm starting to get some of those hot flavors coming through as well. So uh, I think that looks just about a perfect pint. Spot on. Cheers.